This is Matt Wallace with your Minute with the Mayor for Wednesday, May 6th. The U.S. meat production industry has become the source of the most new COVID hotspots. The President has invoked the Defense Production Act of 1950 to use his War Powers Authority to boost food production. So what's actually going on in the meat production industry? This was supposed to have been a big year for America's meat industry. Early in the year, the Des Moines Register had reported that the U.S. expects record supplies of beef, pork, and poultry this year. And as recently as February, the USDA predicted record-setting red meat and poultry production because of the nation's strong economic growth and its low unemployment had boasted consumer demand for animal protein. In terms of the animals produced, we've got ample supplies, huge supplies. The challenge here is the bottleneck in the supply chain. Getting these animals from the farm to the processor and then getting the product to the consumers at the grocery store. The COVID-19 virus has made it increasingly hard to turn those animals into store-ready packs of pork chops and ground beef. Over the years, the number of facilities that turn a cow into a burger or steaks has significantly consolidated. There are fewer of them and they each handle a lot more meat. That means they also have a lot more people working in a single facility where the sick can pass illness like COVID-19 along to other workers and potentially close a plant. To date, there have been 4,200 workers at 115 packing plants in the U.S. that have been infected with the coronavirus. More than 20 of those workers have died. In Iowa alone, there have been 1,653 infected workers at just four plants. Every food processing facility in Pottawatomie County has now had positive diagnosed COVID infected. The meat packing industry had already been under scrutiny for poor working conditions even before the coronavirus struck. A federal watchdog report had found that meat packing employees have among the highest illness rates of all manufacturing employees and are less likely to report injuries and illness than most any other type of worker. In the midst of the pandemic, political pressure has forced manufacturers to reopen any closed meat processing plants, even as their plant workers are falling sick and dying. These workers often have little political power, limited access to health care and similar services, and often need to keep working to stay afloat financially. Identified measures that could aid worker safety, like physical separation of workers or slowing down the speed of the production line, but these safety measures have been discounted because they would slow down production. It's not just the workers who are in danger, it's also America's food supply. Shoppers should be prepared for meat to be more expensive, less varied, and harder to find in the coming weeks and even months with meat processing production down by 25% and consumer meat purchases increasing 30% due to panic buying. Prices are expected to rapidly increase. Grocery stores will have less meat overall, and what they do have will represent a smaller variety of meat cuts. But there is some good news. Federal inspectors will still be around inspecting the meat. And according to the CDC, there is no evidence that food or food packaging can pass along the virus. This just reaffirms how important a well-functioning meat and livestock system is in America. Meat helps fuel the market for feed crops, helps drive the demand for farm implement purchase, and the producer profits bolster rural banks. Livestock producers and meat packing plants and grocers pay significant property taxes that help to fund a variety of programs like K through 12 education. That's your minute with the mayor. Have a great day and do something kind for somebody.